So, smartphones. These days you have three different sections. Basically, an entry phone, a mid-range phone, and a high-end phone. And then you have some weird ones like foldables. However, with prices rising for high-end phones up to $1400, the question simply becomes, do you really want to spend that kind of money on a phone? Or would you rather spend mid-range price, or maybe an entry price? Something like the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9T, that even comes with 5G. Either way, let's talk about the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9T in its full review of the device itself. So the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9T, overall I will say straight away from the get-go that this is actually quite a compelling package. Overall it is really good for the price itself. There are some parts where you can tell it's cutting corners just to get to that price of course, but overall I think it's actually really solid. So let's straight away dive into the specifications of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9T. So the Xiaomi Redmi Note 90 comes with a 6.53 inch Full HD Plus resolution display. It's an IPS LCD panel with a 90Hz refresh rate and 450 nits max brightness. It is protected though by Gorilla Glass 5. In terms of the CPU, we have a MediaTek Dimensity 800U. It's a 5G chip based on a 7 nanometer process. In terms of internal memory, you have 64GB or 128GB. And this one is the 128GB version. There is a difference though between the two. The 64GB version comes with UFS 2.1, whereas the 128GB version is UFS 2.2, so the faster memory for the 128GB version. You do also have a micro SD slot next to it. In terms of battery, you have a 5000mAh battery, and of course you get a charger included in the box that is charging at 18 watt for this battery. When it comes to the camera setup, we have a somewhat triple camera setup, though I would say two aren't really necessary here. But it has a 48 megapixel sensor with a 1.8 aperture and it is a 1 over 2 inch sensor size. This is the main sensor and honestly the only sensor that really matters. The other two are a 2 megapixel macro sensor and of course a 2 megapixel depth sensor that really doesn't do that much. But we'll talk about that in the review itself. In terms of video possibilities, it can record up to 4K and 30 frames per second. In terms of front facing camera, it's a 13 megapixel sensor with a f2.3 aperture and it is actually a cutout on the display. You can record video up to 1080p and 30 frames per second for that. So overall, like I said, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 90 is a compelling package. Now let's talk a little bit about the build itself because there is a bit of a difference. Most of the time when you look at a phone like this, it has a plastic back and then your normal frame, which is also most of the time actually plastic. However, this is done a bit different. You actually have that the plastic frame and the back itself is one part. This makes it that it's unified, but honestly you don't really notice the difference. For myself though, I do think the other option looks a bit more expensive, but overall the feel of this device is actually quite nice. And the buttons themselves are quite clicky. Overall though, the build quality feels solid. Again, I don't hear any weird noises. There isn't a gap right here at the back, which you do have at some other devices. So what is it like to use Xiaomi Redmi Note 90 in day-to-day -day use? Because that's the most important part. Especially when you buy a phone, you just want to see how it performs day to day and if it does it well. So let's start with battery life itself. I think that's really important when it comes to a phone like this and I feel like it should be a good container when it comes to this. With the 5000 mAh battery inside, I get about 8 to 9 hours of screen on time. Sometimes a little bit above, sometimes a little bit below. It's really hard to properly engage how long it actually does that because when I look at the battery information, it's only limited to 24 hours of information and often I manage two days of battery use with it. So I can't tell you perfect exact numbers, but in terms of what I get about, it's eight to nine hours of screen on time. In terms of using the device itself, it unlocks fast enough. It takes a little bit of time, of course, when using the fingerprint scanner, but honestly, really not an issue. When it comes to browsing and all that stuff, it takes a little bit longer. Sometimes it has to think a little bit more. But again, the Dimensity 800U does pretty well. In terms of the CPU itself, by the way, the 800U is a bit above the Snapdragon 730G. So it's not a slow chip by any means. It performs pretty well here. Now, in terms of core performance, I would have to say something here. Because the speaker itself, the audio from when you are calling is actually coming from the top 
and not from the bottom. It's a bit odd when you're calling and the audio is coming actually from here instead of going directly into your ear, even though it has a grill for it. It's strange, so I'm like, if I hold it like a little bit lower, I can hear it better um, because then the little sound that comes from the grill itself um, and the top um, still make it decently unified, but you sound a little bit muffled. How's my qual uh, quality? Yeah, it sounds good actually. It's not, you, you are uh, exactly the same thing. It's not quite as clear as, as it was via WhatsApp. Now some other interesting details as well. It comes with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is actually quite nice to have. Actually, entry phones coming with more features and more in the box than some high-end phones that you pay 1400 euros for. Just saying. Anyway, when it comes to the device itself, you also actually have a coating on the SIM itself. So when you pull it out, you can see that it actually has a coating to protect against water. Of course, I don't know if it has that at the bottom or anything like that. I have to take the phone apart from that to check that out and I'm not planning to do that because I don't feel like I should do that. Either way, don't expect, of course, water resistance on a phone like this. But again, it's nice to see that they added that small detail and it might actually help a little bit against water resistance. However, it doesn't, of course, have any official IP rating when it comes to that. And then we get to the camera or cameras. Well, let's say camera. If I have to say something about the camera setup itself, I like the main sensor. That is actually quite well. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but I don't like the 2 megapixel depth sensor and of course the 2 megapixel micro sensor. There's no use to that. I really don't want to see those on the phone. I think they should have just removed those and given you an ultra wide sensor. That would have been far more beneficial. And of course, that's something extra on the phone that you can actually really use. The micro and depth sensor is just not that usable. And when it comes to actually using the depth sensor and of course capturing the depth of field, it isn't the greatest performer out there. I'll show some shots here so you can actually see where it doesn't perform that great. It's not horrible by any means, but again, it's not the greatest performer out there when it comes to that. So let's talk about the main sensor though. The 48 megapixel main sensor actually is a really good performer. Overall, I think in daylight, it's actually really solid. Colors don't have that exposure where it just punches you in the face because of those colors being so bright. I don't like it when phones do that. The saturation is actually quite nice. It doesn't do that over saturation as well. I just don't like it when phones do that. Overall, the shots look really composed well and it actually has a really good balance to it. And I think it's actually really good for daytime shots when it comes to this price. Of course, it's not gonna compete with some high-end phones because the dynamic range isn't as good as some other phones out there. You can tell by some statues that it is struggling a little bit when it comes to that uh, dynamic range. But overall, again, daytime shots on this phone are actually quite solid. Now, when it comes to video performance, as stated, it can record up to 4K and 30 frames per second. Now, of course, video recording isn't the greatest on this. It isn't as stable as you would like it to be. And of course, as you can see, the contrast is bumped up a little bit and it's more soft than I would like it to be when it comes to video performance. And then we come to low light. Now, this one is a bit of an odd one. Normally, when you use night mode, results that you get out of the picture direct shots should be better. However, in this case, it's not. Also, when it comes to night mode, every single time, it takes the same amount of time to actually capture that shot. So night mode just uses a longer exposure, but also colors are being removed a bit more. I don't really see the result here. So if I would advise you something is use normal mode and then AI. The result that you get out of it is better unless you want to edit some shots. I think that the night mode allows a little bit more of freedom when it comes to that. However, the night mode does create some weird effects when it comes to the sky as well. In terms of video recording in low light, again here, it's actually quite soft, too soft if you ask me. I don't like the performance when it comes to low light video recording. It just isn't there. You can see that the camera is really struggling and it's making it soft to remove as much grain as possible. You can tell it's not the greatest performer here. So overall, how does the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9T stack up? Well, if you want 5G, if you want a phone that is at a budget, an entry phone, this is actually quite a solid contender. It does well what it needs to do. The camera, for the main camera at least, is actually quite solid. There are some things where I'm like, okay, they could have done that better. For instance, like I said, the speaker goes on top instead of going out of the front. It's a bit odd when you're calling and that the audio is coming out that way. Audio performance is average. It is loud enough, but it just doesn't have a lot of bass or high-end notes as well. It just isn't the greatest out there, but again, it's an entry phone. What do you expect for it? In terms of other performances, it's fast enough. It, the fingerprint scanner is consistent and it works quite well. 
Overall, again, I think that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 90 is a solid contender for a good entry phone for the price itself. If you want something where it performs well, if you want something where you pay, well, about this price, I think that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 90 is actually a really good phone that you should consider. But of course, take these things that I noted as well in this review about the device itself and see if it's actually a compelling package to you. That is at the end what matters. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this review and if you did, good. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and of course subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get a notification when I upload a new video. Either way, have a good one and talk to you guys in the next.